G'day. I've been doing big astronomy for a while now. I've been enjoying climbing Aperture Mountain and enjoying the lofty peaks from the inside of my pleasure dome. But this has separated me from the common man and woman who use small telescopes. I need to untether myself from the observatory, climb down from my ivory tower, roll on my sleeves and go outside to do some astronomy in Mother Nature. This means I need to get outside on my back deck. I need something quick that I can grab and go and set up quickly and use the small patch of sky that I have access to to get something. In this episode, I join the itty bitty frack committee and I build a rig which is small. What is this? A telescope for ants, but also features a few of the newest innovations in astrophotography, including Q Focuser, the Focuser from QHY with zero backlash, and also the QHY Minicam 8, the most versatile little mono camera on the market right now. I featured this in a recent video, but the star of the show might be that I bought a new telescope, a cute little Apertura 75Q. Look how small it is. And what does this old guy from Austria who invented the lens with the worst coma I've ever seen have to do with modern astrophotography? You're about to find out. And if you're intimidated by blokes at the local astronomy club with equipment that's bigger than yours, then this video is for you. I'm going to hold your hand and squeeze it gently, lean in and whisper into your ear that I like yours just the way it is, baby. I swear. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. But why this Apertura 75Q telescope, you ask? Well, I like the doublet and I've been using it for the spectroheliograph, but I had some limitations for it for DSO. The bright stars weren't as sharp as I'd like, so I thought maybe I should get a triplet. And then I thought, well, why not a quad? That means four, so it's gonna be better than the two or the three, right? So I thought, screw it, I'll get a quintuplet. Five is the biggest number. And I know that's a dumb way to think because more glass doesn't necessarily mean better, but just wait, and I'll explain. You've probably heard this term pets foul in recent years, especially in regards to lenses and telescopes, which is a bit confusing because if you know anything about the recent rise of pets foul in hipster photography and art house films, it's that they're known for their, you know, crappy look. Whirlpool, coma, creepy looking vignetting, you know, things we don't really want in astronomy. I mean, you know, hipsters just love stuff that's old and kind of crappy. Joseph Petzval was an eccentric genius from the 1800s that invented a lens that was two doublets in series, essentially. This was simply faster, bringing exposures down from 30 seconds to 15 seconds, which was important for portrait photography. Having someone stand still for 15 seconds is much easier than 30. His brilliance was marred, though, by a somewhat tragic life. After a business dispute over the Petzval optical design ownership, a burglary that destroyed his optical research and the death of his wife, he chose a solitary life and very few people attended his funeral, which is pretty sad because his contribution to the sciences wasn't insignificant. He has a street named after him in Slovakia and has a small museum there about his work, but also a crater named after him on the far side of the moon, which is an even bigger flex. So Petzval made a faster lens with two doublets, but a Petzval quintuplet is an improvement on this. This is what we see in telescopes lately. This Aperture 75Q has an extra piece of glass at the rear, and that piece of glass is an integrated field flattener, but also a fully reshaped optical path to fix the vignetting from the Petzval original design. Other telescopes with this Petzval quintuplet super combo are the Ascar SQA, PH, Q, and FRA series, which are also made by Sharpstart and Sharpstar also provides the optics for the 75Q. But none of them kind of match the price point for this one. William Optics do Petzval constructions, but only as quads, so they don't have that extra magic field flattener. But the optics in the double doublets they sell is still better than the traditional Petzval quad. Anyway, the main reason the new improved Petzval optics path is so cool for us astrophotographers is that we don't have to worry about back focal distance too much. As long as it's in focus, it's a flat field and you get nice sharp stars in the corners regardless. On most other telescopes, if you don't have the back focal distance right, your corner stars turn into seagulls and comets. This suits me because I hate measuring back focal distance and dicking around with spaces and calipers. I'm very lazy. If it's in focus, it should be in focus everywhere. So I love this design. And it's worth mentioning that even though this video is sponsored by High Point Scientific, 
they didn't reach out to me about this telescope. I reached out to them and I bought this telescope with my own money because I did the research and on paper, I couldn't see why this wasn't the best bang for buck I could get. But I will shout out High Point Scientific because they are a New Jersey astronomy vendor and they ship anywhere in the world, as I just discovered because they ship the 75Q to me. They have a price match guarantee and they fully support their product. They stock a huge range of brands, including the Aperture series, which is sort of new on the scene and coming up. I'm enjoying seeing where it's going. Check out www.highpointscientific.com or use the links in the description for everything I talk about in this video. Okay, back to the journey. Well, I've been really looking forward to the Q Focuser. Uh, QHY sent me this a while back and the plan was to install it on the Schmidt Casa grain, but they don't have a bracket yet. So I sort of just had it in the box sitting there. So this worked out really well because this is the high precision version of the Focuser, which doesn't mean too much in this particular scenario, but it installed well. I didn't read any instructions or anything like that. I just created this bracket and put it along the bottom side of the 75Q. I realized later that I could have used a couple of spaces here to just lift it away from the base just a touch so I could put the cap back on uh, one of the focus knobs, not the feather touch one, but the other little focus knob just to hide the, uh, the internals and the grease a little bit. I couldn't find a spacer that would fit that either in the QHY stuff or in the 75Q stuff. Maybe I missed something, uh, but it doesn't really make a difference. It doesn't change how this operates whatsoever. So I'm fine with it. I just put some tape around it in the end just so it wasn't completely exposed, but it should be fine. The whole setup is super cool. Like uh, it's a nice pairing. It's a small sensor, right? So it's going to capture a pretty tight field of view, but in pretty good detail, especially because the sampling on this is perfect. This camera matches this telescope perfectly. You can check the details in the Byron Bay calculator there. And of course I had to go outside and remember all of that stuff all over again, setting up uh, polar aligning, um, being outside with the mosquitoes and snakes. We've got snakes around here. There, uh, there was a snake outside my kid's school bus just this week. And I've lost count of the number of times I've come out into the backyard and there are snakes around the observatory and snakes on the back deck and snakes near the shower. Uh, that's just an Australian thing. We're not too worried about it. They're not really into hurting you unless they're brown snakes. Yeah, that would be concerning. But generally speaking at night, uh, you'll only get pythons and things that are nocturnally hunting and that sort of thing. So that's all right. And in any case, for most of the night, I'm still inside. Once I've got all the setup done and the polar alignment done with the Nina three point polar align, I'll go back inside and just relax like I normally do with the observatory and remote control everything with VNC. But I do miss drinking. I haven't been drinking for the last six weeks, not much like a, a wine here and there, but I used to set up and get going with my astrophotography and sit there and babysit everything from my screens inside and polish off a bottle of wine and god I miss that. I just love wine, I love cheese. But I was quickly becoming pretty heavy. I think I've reached about six months pregnant I would say and now I'm back down to about three months pregnant so that feels a bit better. It was a challenging few sessions I have to say. The conditions are just terrible. I'm shooting through the sucker holes. Um, the transparency is bad. I haven't had like a proper clear night in months, but I was just too excited. I needed to do something, especially with this new rig. So I kept going on the Rosette Nebula, and this is a target that I've done before with the Rasa many times, um, but it was something that in when I was getting started, I always considered it like a, a hard target because it's quite faint really, and it's quite a wide target. But with this setup, it crops in pretty tight and I'm happy to see the Panther there. This is what the HA looks like, which was probably the best channel. And you can just see that those corners are Petsvale perfect. And when I say Petsvale perfect, I mean the new Petsvale, the 2025 Astro Petsvale, not the old hipster Petsvale. But all in all, terrible data and <laughs> I only got 10 minutes of S2. Uh, still, you know, I uh, processed my way out of it as best I could and combined it as SHO HOO. So, shoo hoo, uh, patent pending on that uh, particular combination. If I had the time and the clear weather, I'd go back into a deeper exposure. These are just one minute exposures, so I'm pretty impressed with uh, the sensitivity at one minute. So, the cat is out of the bag. That is the short refractor I got, and I'm really happy with it. I gotta say, I can definitely use this scope for camping, traveling, and backyard stuff. And when I say backyard stuff, I know I have an observatory 
but sometimes things are blocked by a fence or a tree or, or the house itself so it is nice to have something else I can just drag out onto the deck and point it at a comet or something that I can't normally see from the observatory exactly. Uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that little piece of the journey and I hope your astrophotography journey is going well. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.